good day. So having just done the A10 in 148 scale, one of the interesting things for me would be to have its adversary, and that is the Soviet Su-25. Um, this is the Soviet answer, or rather the Soviet design to fill the same role. This wasn't meant to take on the A-10. What this was was an aircraft that was meant to fill the same role that um, the the uh, U.S. NATO powers used the A-10 for. You know, ground attack, close support. Um, obviously, like as as the Russians do, they, they came at the um, solving the issue in their way. And this is, again, a, a very similar type roll aircraft. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and pick up a same scale one of those so I could put the two of them together side by side on the shelf. Now, I know a little bit about this aircraft. I will probably learn more as I go on through building it, but this is where we ha what I have and I wanted to go ahead and walk through it. Um, you can see it has the transfers, has writing in various languages. It is 148 scale. Um, you have some nice box art. It also You have some other uh, advertisements for other 148 scale, and this is you know my second 148 scale aircraft. Um, the A10 was my first. Uh, usually, I had been doing mostly in. I apologize for the glare. I've been doing mostly aircraft in 130, 35th, 132nd that scale, but um, doing the A10 and 148, and finding extra space, so we'll do the same. I've heard both very good and very poor things about this kit, so. Um, we're going to find out. <laughs> I really, uh, will discover it. it does have quite a few parts. Um, it's about 32 centimeters long. So figure about a footish long. Uh, and I believe this is, so that's 2022. I believe this is actually a fairly new molding. At least that's what I am led to believe. So let's get into it. I do like the box. I do like, I like the, um, the ways Vista's kits are done, you know, with the sleeve and this nice big box. So, on the top we have all the transfers. Looks like it's like an F4 with a whole bunch of um, markings. Bags and bags of kits. Actually, it looks like two bags of plastic. The typical warning thing. And marking guides and instruction guides. So, let's set this stuff off to the side. And we'll start with this. So this is the, all right, so interesting. It looks like it's, so you have different marking styles or different markings. Uh, you have six, I guess. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Yeah. So you have six different camo versions for, for the model. Um, Number of paints, and they actually do tell you in English. So those of you who are like me and don't have, aren't fluent in Russian yet, um, Soviet, Soviet. It tells you what unit they were. Um, Russian Air Force, Russian Military Forces, Czech Forces, and Bulgarian. So without going into a whole lot of political conversation, which I'm going to avoid, um, as this is about the model, not a philosophy, uh, let's take a look at the kit. Now, each of these have an interesting thing with, with Vezda is you have the, you know, the instructions get stamped. So I'm guessing that's quality control. You have your sprue guides, and then you go straight into building the cockpit. Um, I am of a mind to do this out of the box rather than to go get a whole lot of aftermarket and so forth because I'd like to see if I can actually do a decent kit straight out of the box for this kit. Um, as as always, you start with the cockpit. It looks like the cockpit is pretty straightforward. As you build it, right, um, it does have the HUD. Looks like you're also building your front nose gear as well to go onto the bottom of that piece, which then will get dropped down in. So, cool. Then you put your fuselage together. As typical, it's two pieces. Hopefully they will go together well. Your nose piece is there. You have um, your engine tube, I guess. 
Yeah, so your engine tubes will go in, going through doing your um, version two. So these are different versions. I'm gonna have to understand what that means. So for assembling version two, assembling version two only. So I am assuming that the landing gear is different for different versions. So I'll need to actually figure out what that means. Um, your engine intakes. And here's interesting. So <clears throat> this is kind of cool. So looking at this, you do put this together in halves. So you're going to have that nice seam right down the top. Now, when you flip it, apparently you're going to then have a plate that overlays onto the bottom. So that, that promises to be somewhat interesting. I wonder how those seams are going to look. And then you have these two caps that will form around the intakes. And then you have these there for your, that's these assemblies here for your exhaust. Air brakes, missile pods. Um, and again, version one, version two, depending on what your, actually these are, yeah. So version one, version one, version one or version two. Um, this is with brakes open. And I guess version is whether you landed or not. No, wouldn't be. Not really sure. I'm speculating. I shouldn't. Um, once you get these together, then the wings will go and lay on top. Interesting. So instead of slotting in, they're going to lay on top. Um, tailplane. That's an interesting way to do a tire. Uh, curious. So you could go wheels down or wheels up, Becker. If you like that, you could do wheels up. Um, and then all your armaments. And then your marking guides. So you have marking guides for the aircraft, and then you also have markings for your munitions, which is nice. That actually helps to make the munitions look much better. So that looks pretty good. Ah, let's see here. Let's take a quick look at so the canopy. This is interesting. So the canopy has the glass is okay, right? I've been digging in dirt, so I apologize for my dirty fingers. The glass is pretty much okay. It's a little bit of warpage and stuff, but it's not terrible. Um, for what it is, it's not scratched or beat up. Interesting, your nose is clear. Or those those pieces are clear. We'll see what those are all for. Your HUD actually doesn't look bad. You do have to paint your frame. The HUD glass doesn't look bad. Okay. And then let's take a look at your transfers. So these are your transfers for all of your template markings, etc., which look to be fairly nice. Um, they look to be fairly in register, and it looks to be. I've never really had a big problem with the vested transfers, so. And then these are your markings for the different aircraft. Um, you do get mark. So here's a nice thing: you get templates for your instrument panels. So, depending on how those go, those will lay on. Um, and all your other ones. I may see if there's different markings for different styles, but I, you know, again, I'm going to try and stay quote unquote out of the box for this. Yeah. All right. So now, let's take a look at the plastic because that's the other part. There are close to 350, 400 parts here. Right. Come on. So, what I want to do here is. I apologize for the noise. That's what I get when I open this up on camera rather than doing it ahead of time. So let's take a look at the plastic. Set that aside. Um, you get two of these, and these are your munitions. Your tires. So those are your tires. Your engine work. So the detail looks like you have raised rivets. Your tires look nice. I'm, I'm going to be curious to see what those seams. So the sprue gate there, there's going to be cleanup to do. But they're sharp. 
right? So your detail on the missiles, the rivets, all of the things on this are looking quite sharp. And that's nice. Uh, let's go ahead and go to this. So this is that underneath panel. Now here you have recessed panel lines and raised rivets. So you have raised and recessed detail. It's a little scratched, but again, I apologize for my finger being covered in dirt. It's not played in the mud the last couple of days. Um, some nice detail for underneath. Um, these do say molded 20, these are marked 2022. So these are somewhat new moldings. And I do like the detail of them. I mean, they're nice and sharp, nice and crisp. You do have some very fine, crisp details. I have a feeling those tires are going to annoy me, but we'll see how that all works out. Um, those are your engines, your engine interiors. Um, you do have ejector pin marks on some things, but... It does, I have yet to see them where it looks like they will be visible, right? So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, let's see, so here are your wings. Nice work. I do like the detail, they'll take a wash very nicely. Some very fine rivets. These are, these are raised, but they're very, very fine. If they fit, if this all fits well and those seams can be cleaned up well, this is some really, really nice detail. That promises to be. Here's your fuse, your main fuselage. And so as things will do, they will get a little, a little softer around an edge, but it's not that bad. I mean, that it's a very I mean, it goes the length of the top, but it's a fairly short seam. And that's not bad. I like it. This is a very interesting subject to me. So I'm looking forward to learning more about this vehicle as much as you know, just putting the kit together. So, the detail on the pilot is actually not bad. So, Becker, you want to do wheels up with a pilot? It looks like that's some pretty nice detail. Your detail, your um, these are pretty fine. Your stick controllers are nice. There's your tub, your seat, at least the start of the seat. There's a seat that the pilot sits on, if I can get it to focus. So it, it appears to me, prior to getting into building it, that this has some pretty nice things to work with. Now here's more of your munitions. Again, details nice. I'm not going to go through all of them. Like the ones that are duplicates of each other. There's no point in looking at all of those. And then you have four of these. And very Soviet missile launcher. All right. Well, that is... So you have four of these munitions and four of these. So you have plenty of munition sprues to pick from and to build up from. That is this. So that's the Vesla 148 scale SU-25 ground attack aircraft. Um, this is my next is going to be my next project. So um, this box opening will be the first in the series. So I hope that if this kit is on your radar, you're interested to see what is in the box. That's what you see. If you want to see how this builds up, stick around for the rest of the series as I get into it. And I can whine and complain or gush on, uh, gush on it as it goes. So again, thank you very much for watching. I hope this is helpful. And until next time, happy modeling.